I'm going to be honest. I've been hearing a lot of negativity about Inglorious Bastards. And you know what? I do understand that it took Tarantino a ridiculous long time to make this. And the rumors of the previous movie were just amazing. Rumors like he said he was going to get Bruce Willis, Arnold, and Sloan in it. None of these rumors came true, but uh, after I saw the movie, I couldn't. I thought the commercial looked rather cheap the first time I saw it. I didn't know what to think. But after I saw the movie, I absolutely loved it. I mean, a lot of these people don't like the movie, I mean, because they aren't... They don't like movies that Quentin Tarantino likes. They really don't care for the weird grindhouse underground stuff. Quentin Tarantino is all kind of movies. But he does have a place in his heart for the, the stuff that no normal movie fan would watch. I mean, for Christ's sakes, the guy Hugo Sticklitz in this movie. He's based off the... His name is the Mexican actor who's in stuff like Cyclone and Nightmare City. Tell me, how many people who claim to be movie fans know what the fuck Nightmare City is or Cyclone? No one. The idea that uh, Antonio Marghetti's name is mentioned in the movie. Or the idea that this is a title of another... It's named after another movie, a.k.a. Deadly Mission, which I had on VHS. And Glorious Bastards, of course. But the point is, a lot of these people are going in and watching this movie and they don't get a lot of it. So, therefore, they're like, the dialogue was too much. Uh, well, if you want to watch a bunch of uh, crappy dialogue in any other movie, I'd rather watch fucking Quentin Tarantino's dialogue. His dialogue only got on my nerves once, and that was in Death Proof, because he rehashed too much of it. With this fresh new dialogue and all these different accents and stuff, is just awesome, because considering the fact that they're talking different languages, the acting had to be very, very hard. People are saying Brad Pitt overacted. It's in Nazi-occupied Nazi France, and he made up the whole goddamn thing. The movie's not realistic, really. Obviously. So I think Brad Pitt did excellent. I think the villains are excellent. I think this is the closest thing that we'll get to something that is of the past, but with a Quentin Tarantino twist on it. I mean, it's like, okay, now we have all this pop culture reference and stuff inside old-school movies, mm -hmm. and he, makes, he goes out and he makes an entertaining movie. That's what he does. That's what he's planned to do. And people, it seems like this, okay? There's a lot of movie fans, people that are love movies. We all love movies, okay? I get the point. District 9 was an amazing movie. I understand this. But it's almost like District 9 came in and said, fuck you, Hollywood, because it was made very different and very weird and it under, for $30 million and it did excellent. It was an excellent movie. And, I mean, it was made very different. But the point is... Just because it's a great movie and it said, fuck you, Hollywood, doesn't mean Inglourious Bastard sucks because it was more mainstream. It doesn't automatically mean it sucks all the time. I know I feel that way sometimes, but I'm talking about shit fest like epic movie. But the point is, just because Quentin Tarantino is a very popular director, you don't automatically have to act, get on your high horse, people, and be like, well, it's Quentin Tarantino. I've always thought he was shitty. Okay? No. I mean... Tell me not. If you do not enjoy his movies, therefore, don't go see his movies. That's the point. But I can't see how you can't unless you don't like old school movies. But if that makes any sense to anyone. But the point is, District 9 is amazing and Glorious Bastards is amazing. They're both great movies. The point is, people are just hating on Inglorious Bastards because I think they think it's the popular thing to do. The unpopular thing to do, maybe, which in turn is the popular thing to do, is to hate something that everyone else would like, or some similar like that. The reviews are very mixed, and I think this is what happens a lot of the time. I mean, I love my violence, but you gotta have a lot of, the, the more a movie builds up to the violence, the more the violence means something to me. Like, Dirty Dozen. The movie's not packed with all violence, but at the very end when they go on the mission, amazing movie. Uh, I just, those are my piece. I loved Inglorious Bastards. I just wanted to say what I thought about it. I love District 9. They both, District 9 did something that most movies can't do. It succeeded on a, a micro budget for how good it looked. I know 30 million is a micro budget, but I mean, I mean, for that kind of film that was just that big of a movie, I mean, and the idea that you could see a little bit of Peter Jackson shine through with the main character and everything, at least I could. I mean, some of his old movies. But yeah. District 9 was really great, and so was Inglorious Bastards was really great. But they're different. So I don't... And I just recently both saw these movies, that's why I'm talking about them. I just thought Inglorious Bastards was getting crapped on for... bad reasons. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's dialogue is amazing. I don't know why people don't like it. 
I know he reuses some of the dialogue, but a couple lines here and there are cool. Like, Christopher Waltz is just a great villain in this. I mean, it's amazingly creepy. Brad Pitt is a fan, a popular character in this movie. I mean, I mean, I think you could see, like, old men quoting him all day, but I enjoyed that. And, uh, I really, really like the movie, and I don't see why people are giving it so much hate. I mean, if someone else's name was tied to it, either A, would have never, ever made theaters, or B, people will be saying it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Thank you.